I'm hoping that you can hear just how loud this clock mechanism is. It's from a recently repaired clock I did, the Hammond Micronus. Once I got it back into the case and together, it just started getting really loud. Uh, I was able to repair this the first go around without having to take out the gears. I felt it was just too complex to deal with that. But it's so loud now that I really have no choice. I'm gonna to try to open it up, clean everything up and hopefully get it to run quiet. I went online looking for some videos of how to take these kind of clocks apart and really didn't find anything uh, that was that helpful. There were a couple that showed a few of the parts having been removed, but not how to disassemble the entire thing. So I'm gonna take a good close look at this and I have to decide whether I want to take off from this side because there's three screws here or from this side. And right now I'm leaning towards here because this little governor, I think they call it, is making a lot of the noise. So I'll probably access this side first. Let me kill the power and I'll start to undo those screws. I removed the three nuts from here. I also took out a couple of screws from here that were attaching this plate to this bake-like portion here, which is what the wires are going through. I was also concerned about overly flexing the power cord coming out of here. So I placed some epoxy glue over it to sort of hold it in place. It's really easy to just break these right off from the coil. And if that happens, it's, it's a real task to try to repair a coil, uh, although I've done it. The next step would be to try to remove this plate and looking at it, this is attached to the gears inside and it doesn't seem to be coming up too easily. So I really don't know if I'm going to be able to get this off, but I'll try to wiggle it off and then I'll come back and show you what I came up with. I managed to remove the plate and these couple of gears I can take out. These are Bakelite, very fragile, and I'm dropping it everywhere. I had to tape down this little piece that holds the wiring to the coil because it was kind of flopping around. And I think what I'm going to do first is just clean up these parts. So I'll put them in the ultrasonic, try to get them real clean. I think a lot of the noise was coming from this part. And if I clean it and lubricate it, that might and get it back together like this that might quiet it down we'll find out and that might eliminate me having to open up the rest of it i've cleaned up all the gears the plate i plan to lubricate them as well as the pivot holes on both sides and then look to reassemble it once that's together depending on if it's still noisy or not i might then look to undo the other side and access the gears in here but one thing i want to show and it's a problem with these complex movements that no matter how careful you are taking photos of it before disassembling it, really looking at it closely, when I initially removed this plate and placed it down, when I lifted it up, I discovered, I don't know if you can see it here, this little bitty spring that fell off from somewhere. And I do not know where. And I'm not going to be able to place this back on. And I'm hoping that something as simple as this really is not going to affect whether it's working or not. But I'll lube everything up, reassemble it, and uh, see if it still works. This was unquestionably the most difficult clock I've ever tried to put back together. Uh, however, I got it back together and it is still running. It's definitely uh, considerably quieter than before, although I do hear some noise out of it. Uh, it's, uh, it must have taken me 10 tries to get the gears positioned properly and sandwich the plates back together. Uh, I really don't even know how they were able to manufacture these. There must be some set of blueprints somewhere or instructions as how best to uh, assemble this clock. Um, it was a real, real trial and error to figure out what I should put in first before putting it back together. In any event, I'm going to put everything back together, get it back into the case and uh, hopefully it'll be running uh, quieter than before. Clearly that little spring that uh, happened to fall out doesn't seem to be affecting it as of yet. 
So let me get everything back together and then I'll come back. Everything's back together, everything's reassembled. And although I can still hear the clock, I do believe it's not quite as noisy as it was before. Um, but what I find most uh, interesting is that now when I shut the power off, the backup spring that makes it a bichronous clock seems to be functioning. The clock uh, continues to run once I turn off the power. And I'll show you that now. Let me flip it off. And it's still running. And I've seen some videos where people have mentioned that trying to engage this feature, the clock initially runs either too fast or too slow before settling in. But this seems to be working fine. I'll flip the power back on. And uh, no change, it's, it's running fine now. Another thing that I did, if you recall, I cut the power cord so it wouldn't disturb the connection to the coil. I just soldered one end to the other and then sealed it up with some heat shrink uh, wrap. And uh, that's uh, quite a safe thing to do to it. And that's pretty much it. Once again, bye for now.